Wow. Yeah, I just saw the Winnie the Pooh horror movie, Blood and Honey, and it is without exaggeration one of the stinkiest horror films I've ever had the pleasure of watching, and undoubtedly in the top 10 worst films I've ever seen in theaters, which is truly an honor, because I've seen all kinds of worthless, absolute trash. Now, I'm sure you all know Winnie the Pooh's public domain now, which is why this film was able to be made in the first place. This isn't like an official Winnie the Pooh production. It's not canon. This isn't going to be part of the established Winnie the Pooh lore. The property went to the public domain Thunderdome, meaning anybody could use and abuse it freely. So, a lot of people tried to latch on to the tit and suckle some milk out of the power of the IP. And this led to this production here. It was a very cheap one that was haphazardly thrown together, clearly trying to capitalize off the wackiness of its concept. What if Winnie the Pooh killed people? And that's about it. That's as far as the creativity goes. And it's very clear they rushed the fuck out of this because nothing works. This is the laziest, most unapologetic cash grab I've ever seen in my life. But it doesn't even have the decency to be self-aware. It is bad at everything it tries to do, and it doesn't even do it with, like, a smile on its face. Of course I knew going into this it was going to be bad. Anyone with eyes could see that this would be dog shit. I mean, just look at the costume. They didn't even bother putting any effort into Winnie the Pooh or Piglet. They just found the cheapest masks available at Party City, and then just had two guys wearing the masks. That's it. They also have human hands. And also, a lot of times, the mask kind of rides up a little bit, so you can just see, like, a normal human actor underneath the mask. It's just a disaster. This is one of the few films where I actually took notes during it because I felt like I was so insulted and I couldn't believe what I was watching. So I jotted down a few notes during this, also because it was basically just me and Aaron in this movie theater watching it together, fucking stunned by what we were witnessing. It is truly a catastrophe on every level, but I will openly say... It was fun bad. It was. I'm, I'm happy to report it wasn't boring bad. It's sheer incompetence and its inability to do anything right while not being self-aware made it a fun, enjoyably shit film. So I'd like to walk you through a lot of what happens here. Clearly we're going to get in spoiler territory. So fair warning, though I don't know why you'd give a fuck about spoilers for this kind of movie. It's not exactly heavy on the narrative at all. So let's go ahead and dive in. Just to give you a quick example of how much they cared about doing this cheaply, they don't have Winnie or Piglet talk. They clearly wanted to save money on the budget by not having additional voice actors try and impersonate Winnie or Piglet, so they came up with this. During a harsh winter, Winnie the Pooh hatched this genius idea to eat Eeyore in order to save the rest of them. So they sacrifice Eeyore for the greater good, they eat him, and then take a vow of silence because they were so traumatized by what they had done to their friend. So they never speak. So that saved them some money. Uh, the story is as follows. Christopher Robin meets Winnie and the gang in the Hundred Acre Wood. They're friends for a while, but Christopher Robin goes off to college. And during that time, the group goes fucking hog wild they, they go insano style their minds break they turn to madness and they become these ferocious killing machines for some reason because they felt abandoned by christopher robin but christopher robin is now engaged and he wants to bring his fiance into everything that was important in his life which includes winnie and the gang so they visit the hundred acre wood looking for them and his fiance doesn't believe him but then we get like Darman level acting throughout the entire film, but immediately it starts to shine because his wife is like, you are so successful because you are creative. And even if these are imaginary friends, that business that you have made and you being as creative of you as you have been has led to you being one of the best people in the world, Christopher Robin. But I'm not sure if they're real. And Christopher's like, but no, fiance, these are real. And then sure enough, they eventually stumble upon the, the cabin and then Piglet grabs a chain and strangles his wife till she dies. And then Christopher Robin gets cornered by Pooh and Piglet and he's... He drops what I believe to be one of the most iconic lines in horror movies now. He says, Pooh, you've got to help me. Something's wrong with Piglet. He killed my wife. <laughs> and, and then that's when it sinks in on Christopher Robin that they're all, you know, off their gourd. So Pooh and Piglet start closing in on Christopher Robin as he's yelling and screaming... And he's saying, I, we were friends, but we were friends, we were friends, what happened to us being friends? And then 
They kidnap him, and that's the intro. A fierce and fiery start to this one. And I'd like to mention that the two actors in the Winnie and Piglet costumes, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that they're like 80 years old. Because they move around so fucking slow. Especially Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear fee fi fo fums around like he's carrying a thousand pounds on each ankle. I thought for a second every time they moved, they slowed down the footage by like half. Like they moved at 0.5 speed. Uh, it, it really looks like they're riddled with arthritis. Every movement they make is extremely stiff. When they kill somebody, it's almost like animatronic to a certain degree. Like, it's so jarring. I, like, I, I would have expected them to be a little more limber since they're supposed to be like these crazy, agile, unstoppable killing machines. But my god, they are painfully slow and stiff. It's weird. But anyway, moving on. So that's the intro done. And then we get to our main characters. And I couldn't even tell you any of their names because it just genuinely wasn't important. They are actual just meat balloons for Winnie and Piglet to pop. So it's a group of girls that go to this cabin in the Hundred Acre Wood for a vacation. And this is a no technology vacation. They want to go off the grid, you know, like in fucking witness protection, basically. So they turn their phones off and everything is when they get to the cabin. But unfortunately, one of their friends was a little late. So when she was calling them to ask for directions, they didn't answer. So she pulled over outside, like next to the cabin, a little far down the road and was trying to get like uh, them to answer. And as she's calling, Pooh Bear spots her. And this is very bad because Pooh Bear's got a taste for blood and he's, he's gluttonous. So Pooh Bear starts chasing her down like this. The girl's screaming. She eventually makes it to some kind of like warehouse and takes cover underneath a wood chipper. You can see where this is going. Uh, as she's hiding, Pooh happens to find her. And I shit you not, I swear this is going to sound like I'm making up, but I'm not. Pooh grabs her and then rips her shirt off. And then her tits are flopping all over the place for a minute and Pooh's like moving her around so her tits kind of jiggle. And then he starts slamming her head against the wood chipper till she dies. And then he puts her in the wood chipper to make a blood sundae out of. So it's shooting all of her blood and guts out of the wood chipper. And that's it. I don't understand what the point was in Pooh Bear stripping her nude, basically. Well, I guess not fully nude. Making her topless. I, I don't really get it. I thought this was going to be like some kind of narrative plot point where like he sees her tits and his eyes just go like, Awooga! Or something to indicate that he's like a pervert like truly just the most you know reprehensible menace of all time but it played no role in anything because Pooh doesn't talk he has no emotion he has no real character he's he just kills so what the fuck was a point in just like having her tits all over the place for like 20 seconds and that's another thing all of these kills the directors confuse tension with just general time and dead silence and dead space so when she's hiding it is painfully long of her just sitting there and Pooh's feet by the door. It'll go on for like 45 seconds of nothing happening. It's not building tension. It's just overstaying its welcome and it's just dead space. It's fucking worthless. And that's for every single kill. The director really just thought like holding a still frame of something in the background is building tension. And it's just not. It was just really mind-numbingly boring and it really lasted a long time. Like in the intro when Christopher Robin was saying, but we were friends, we were friends and Piglet and Pooh were coming in. That scene was probably about two minutes of them standing there, slowly getting closer, as Christopher Robin repeated the same five lines over and over again, like it was an NPC malfunctioning in a video game. It was painful how long those scenes would drag. But anyway, moving on, so that girl got thrown in the wood chipper, uh, back at the cabin, one of the girls is an Instagram model, so she's in her downtime playing music in a hot tub, and while Pooh Bear is dispensing of, like, this corpse, this skeleton of one of their victims, he hears the music... So he looks around, and then he sees the hot tub. So as she's taking Instagram pictures, you can see Pooh in the background. And the girl notices that too, and she's like, oh, what the fuck is this? That's a weird looking creature back there. So then she turns around, literally knows Pooh is there, and knows that it's some kind of fucked up abomination back there. And she's like, I, you know, I know you're there, but you're not going to ruin my vacation. Or what was the line? You're not going to ruin my hot tub or something? I, I don't know, it was a terrible line, but she recognizes that there is a complete stranger in these fucking woods this giant fucking animal recognizes that and then just says you're not going to ruin my time so she gets back in the hot tub where she gets chloroformed by piglet and Pooh bear so then they fucking hog tire on the front porch and then steal one of their cars 
and Piglet puts his foot on her while Pooh Bear slowly drives over her skull and then you get a close-up of her skull slowly exploding so her eye pops out at the camera and then blood starts squirting and they're using the worst CGI of all time for the blood squirting and eventually her head just pops and blows up. The genre that this movie's in is torture porn, pretty much. Like, that is basically all it is. It's just Winnie and Piglet torturing and killing people. I even forgot to mention that Christopher Robin is being tortured by Pooh. Uh, he was hitting him with Eeyore's tail, just, like, fucking flogging him with it. And this is what I'm talking about with a lot of things they try, they didn't even bother to follow through on. There's a moment where Christopher Robin's like, I know you're still good in there, Pooh, this isn't you. You killed my wife, but I know you're still good in there. And then Pooh has this moment where he, like, cries and then he breaks some boxes and then he looks at himself in the mirror and then he goes back to hitting him with Eeyore's tail and it's never explored again like ever at all like there's just this brief moment of vulnerability but then he goes right back to just being this two-dimensional killing machine so now back to the cabin they blow up that girl's head with the, with the car it turns out all of the other girls for some reason spread out across the land so two of them are by like a pond talking uh, another two of them are literally, like, doing nothing. <laughs> just standing around doing nothing. But they hear their friend scream, and they all run back to the cabin. They see her corpse. They freak out. They go inside. And Pooh is written, get out in blood on the on the window. So now they, they recognize they're being hunted. They're under attack, and they're trying to find things to defend themselves with. And then the main girl remembers that she brought a gun with her on this vacation. Her backstory is she had a stalker, so she's been a little uh, scared of things, so she has a gun. And when she mentioned that, both Aaron and I thought it was going to be like a Glock or something, like a normal gun. You know, like a normal kind of gun that you see in movies. Well, it turns out the gun she brought is a fucking revolver. But not just any revolver. It's like a goddamn six-shooter straight out of Overwatch. Like, she was fucking McCree. She had this giant goddamn revolver. She came out here with that big iron on her hip. So she pulls out this massive revolver, a fucking 50 caliber hand cannon, and they're like, okay, now we can defend ourselves. But then they still split up, and so the girl with the revolver and her friend, they get into like a sniper's perch, and Pooh is just standing in the middle, like looking down, looking all confused, as they have like a clear shot on him, but they're not taking it for some reason, then Pooh walks into the kitchen. So then we go to the other group of two girls that for some reason split off near the pool, and Piglet's over there, and they freak out. One of the girls falls in the pool. The other one, Piglet pushes, and she gets knocked unconscious. And then Piglet... Fuck, it is so hard to describe how awful this is. Piglet is after the girl in the pool, and he has a chain and a sledgehammer. And he starts, like, slapping the chain against the pool water, trying to get her. And the girl's, like, moving backwards, like, slowly in the pool as Piglet's hitting the water. And this goes on for, like, two minutes. It's terrible. And then he eventually he's like, this isn't working, I'm going to get the sledgehammer. And while he's getting the sledgehammer, the girl, instead of like getting out of the pool, like a normal, logical decision, like getting out of the pool and running away while he's getting the sledgehammer, she instead like gets closer to him in the pool. And I thought this was going to be like a fight back moment where she's going to like grab the chain and yank him in and try and kill him. But no, she uses it closer to him as he gets the sledgehammer. Then he gets the sledgehammer and she starts backing up again in the pool, like slowly swimming her way back. And then Piglet h hits her with the sledgehammer and kills her. And then the girl that got knocked out from the push, they take and chain up back at their camp. And Winnie the Pooh slaps her after eating some honey. So he's eating some honey. Uh, the girl wakes up. He notices she wakes up and he slaps her. And he slaps her again. And then he slaps her again. And then he slaps her again. And then he slaps her again. It goes on for like a fucking minute. That's what I'm talking about. All of these scenes last for so long. And it's so unnecessary. It does nothing. It doesn't make it more tense. It doesn't make it more brutal. It just makes it really fucking weird and uncomfortable. Anyway, that's, a, that's another one of the vacationing girls dead. Don't even know her name. None of these characters had any level of depth to them whatsoever. Um, the other two girls that have the revolver and uh, her friend, they try and, you know, track down where her friend got taken. They eventually track it back to Winnie the Pooh and Piglet's hideout. And <laughs> there's now another girl that's been captured and she's screaming so they free her and she's been mauled by Piglet so her face is all fucked up and it makes her mad. Then they free Christopher Robin as well at some point who's still alive, just being tortured. So now they have Christopher Robin freed and this completely random girl that also happened to get tortured by Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. And the girl whose face is all messed up from Piglet grabs the gun and says, I'm going to make that bastard pay for this. 
So then she shoots a shot in order to lure Piglet out, and he comes out from a fucking trailer, and he's got his chain, and they're circling around a fire in what I, ex- what I expect they thought would be a cool action moment, like a cool action shot. So they're circling this fire. He's got a chain, she's got a gun, and she's ready to go fucking John Wick on him. But then she tries to shoot him, and it's out of bullets. It turns out the girl only packed a single bullet in that revolver, which leads me to believe that her plan for the vacation was to play fucking Russian roulette with her friends. Why would she only load a single bullet into the revolver? And that's not even the stupidest part about that scene. Because they freed that girl, they freed Christopher Robin, Piglet and Pooh had no idea that was going on, I think they both went to sleep for some reason. They could have all left. But when the girl took the revolver and said, I want to make Piglet pay, the other two girls, well three because they had freed her friend, but the other three girls just decided to watch. So they get in the closest proximity they can to this showdown, which happens to be a single keg, like an actual beer keg they hide behind. And they're watching it, like peeking over the side while this complete random woman has their gun and is about to shoot Piglet. They all just came over to watch for no reason. They could have just left. They could have left and they would have survived. They would have been fine. But they decided to be spectators here. And it's like an episode of Scooby-Doo. Like, they, they couldn't help it. They're just peeking over to watch it go down. So once it's clear that the, that the girl's out of ammo, Winnie the Pooh comes up behind her, knocks her down, pours honey on her face, and Piglet eats her face off. And that's when Pooh notices that the three other girls happen to be behind that keg of beer watching. So then he's, like, coming at him like this. And two of the girls run away, but the other one hides and grabs a sledgehammer and ambushes Piglet. And she hits Piglet twice in order to get revenge for the friend that she killed. The other two girls are running through the forest, which is, I believe, miles away. Like, they ran miles, like, in in a matter of seconds. And Pooh's following them like a goddamn robot. But after Piglet gets hit twice, he screams. And Pooh hears this miles away. And somehow Pooh instantly teleports back to the camp. And right after that girl delivers the killing blow on Piglet... Winnie the Pooh kills her by stabbing a machete through her throat and hanging her up on a post. Every character in this movie has super speed or like Dragon Ball Z level instant transmission because they're teleporting all over this place. They'll teleport from the cabin to the Pooh hideout to the woods back to the cabin all in a matter of actual seconds. It's fucking crazy. But anyway, now we're down to our last two survivors. Piglet's dead. Pooh's very upset about all of this. Sorry, just checking my notes, making sure I didn't miss anything. I, I'm skipping over some other shit. Like, it's it's so bafflingly fucking terrible. But anyway, uh, the next important plot point is the two girls make it to a road. And there's a, a, a pickup truck of some, some goofy dudes in there. One of them comes out looking like the fucking Crypt Keeper. And they're like, what, what's wrong with you girls? You're not making any sense. What do you mean you're scared? Who are you scared of? And then Pooh's on the road and they're like, you scared of this this joker, this clown? All right, we'll get in the car. We'll take care of this. And they march up to him with baseball bats, beer bottles, and a crowbar. And they're like, hey, bub, what did you do to scare these girls? You're not a nice guy, are you? So then they start beating up Pooh Bear, and he's just tanking all of the shots. And then <laughs> I wrote down how he kills them because it's so wild. So after it becomes clear that what they're doing is ineffective, Pooh slaps the entire side of someone's face off. Like, literally turns them into Harvey Dent, Two-Face. Slaps the side of the guy's face off, which kills him. And then he karate chops another guy's arm off, and then curb stomps him. Then he uh, karate slices another guy's throat open, killing him. And then the last guy, he summons a swarm of bees to kill. So Pooh Bear can control bees in this universe, I guess, and he uses that to kill that guy who runs away. Then the girls freak out, but they have a car now, and they they try and get away in the car, but Pooh's latched on to the back, and then they break real hard. Pooh flies off, but for some reason they broke so hard that their heads hit the dash and they pass out. So then one of the friends gets grabbed by Pooh, and then he rips her, her head off and then throws it on the windshield. And then our protagonist turns on the windshield wipers because the blood was gross, I guess, <laughs> which is so stupid, so fucking dumb, because I guess she was still going to try and get away and couldn't see with their friend's head in the windshield. But she wasn't able to clean it off fast enough and start the car, so Pooh grabs her. And he's about to kill her, but then Christopher Robin comes speeding in in another vehicle and hits Pooh, which stuns him, but it doesn't kill him. So then Pooh grabs that girl one more time, slits her throat in front of Christopher Robin, and then says the only line that Pooh and Piglet have, and he says, You left us. 
and then after you know kills the girl slits her throat and then just starts stabbing her a million times as christopher robin cries and runs away roll credits i just summed up the whole movie for you that is the whole movie i am convinced that they were padding for time with all of those very long drawn out sections of like nothing happening I think that was in order to fill time, in order to make like the bare minimum for a feature length film. Because this movie is fucking short. Like, way shorter than I would have ever expected. It's over in like a single blink of the eye. And everything that happens is so half-baked and terrible. All of it looks terrible. None of what they even attempted to do lands in even the singlest, slightest capacity. I thought this would be self-aware goofiness. It's not self-aware. It is goofy, but for all the wrong reasons, which almost makes it better. Like I said, it is enjoyably bad. It is fun bad. It's no moonfall, unfortunately, but I did enjoy my time watching it. It was something special. Like, oh bother. I tell you, this, this, this one was a super stinker. And uh, I just had to come home and vent about it and, and talk about it because holy shit. It has a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I actually agree with. It's very rare I agree with Rotten Tomatoes scores. That one's right on the money. 5% sounds about right. The audience score of 51%, though, I can't understand because it is enjoyably shit. Like, it is a fun, bad movie. It's, it's, it's something wild. That's about it. See ya.